Today we're going on a technical walkthrough of the mechanical design of Wheatley Mark II. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I scrapped Wheatley Mark I. See, I could have just finished and made it look right for the camera and that would be totally fine. But that's not good enough for me. See, half the reason I'm doing this project is because I wanna challenge myself as a designer and that means doing things right. And because I want this to be an open design that other people can replicate, that means solving the issues before I share those files so that you don't suffer the pain that I have to suffer. And whenever I'm taking on a complex project like this, I'm always learning new things, which is where most of the fun in the design challenge comes from, which is why I'm really excited that today's sponsor is brilliant. So stick around if you're interested in boosting your own creative problem solving capabilities because the best way to learn anything is by doing it yourself. And you can learn interactively with Brilliant's fun, hands-on lessons in math, science, and computer science. Interactive learning helps you learn six times more effectively than watching lecture videos. If you're watching this because you have an interest in robotics, programming is one essential skill to building any kind of robot like Wheatley. So if you're unsure of where to begin, I'd recommend checking out Brilliant's Computer Science Fundamentals course. Head to brilliant.org slash mrvolt to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 viewers will also get 20% off an annual membership. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Wheatley Mark I was already scaled down from the in-game size, but still too unwieldy. This meant rigidity was a major issue and 3D printing was extra difficult. So I scaled down my previous design by 25%. This gives him a rough diameter of 333 millimeters. Now, all of the parts can be printed on a more commonly available 300 millimeter print bed. Despite being American, I actually do enjoy using units other than furlongs and football fields. So for Wheelie Mark II, I switched over to an all metric design. This way things are easier to source and way easier to put together. That's right, I've ditched my beloved freedom units for your benefit. Wheelie Mark I had a 125 millimeter 1080p display that worked just fine, but this is scaled down, so Wheatley's new eye is a beautiful 86 millimeter 800 by 800 pixel round IPS display. It has a non-functional capacitive glass layer for protection on top, and will be powered by a Raspberry Pi 02W, and incorporates a Pimeroni speaker fat for audio playback. It's a bit chunkier in the bezel department thanks to Mark I had a digital iris, but perhaps mostly due to my inefficient programming skills, just didn't render fast enough. So we're skipping that code altogether and jumping straight to a full mechanical iris. I wish the bezel were thinner to match the proportions in game, but the blades do have to be big enough to cover the eye and also exist within the bezel dimensions. So I had to make a compromise. This is ultimately driven by a tiny, fast, smart servo, which couples to a gear on the iris mechanism, but more on that in a bit. Like Mark I, I'm going to use two servos to allow him to pan his eye left and right and tilt up and down. The only significant difference is now I'm using tiny smart servos since the eye is quite light now. These daisy chain together so there's less cables to manage. There's no mechanical trick to making the eyelids recede within his face, it's just a matter of perspective. If the point of rotation for the eyelids were the main axis, they would be very visible. But if we shift the axis of rotation forward when they retract, we get a more dramatic perspective shift. So they appear to tuck in Wheatley neatly. Also, for some reason, I made them needlessly complicated in Mark I. So for Mark II, they're directly driven by more smart servos for a much more compact and easy to assemble design. The game model for Portal 2 cores incorporates a real-world mechanism called a Stewart platform that allows for six degrees of freedom. While a wide range of motion allows for more expressive movement, the game design lacks any inner mechanisms to account for the inner eye and eyelids. So they're just floating and have no modeled actuators. But more importantly, a Stewart platform is redundant for a practical core. To explain, let's break down each degree of freedom that would be allowed and what we actually need.
So for what the game accomplishes with six actuators, I can do that with three servo motors. This reduces wiring complexity, cost, power consumption, and size. So I think that's a worthwhile design change. Wheatley is capable of revolving within his outer shell. This wasn't a feature I included in Mark 1 as it was going to be a headache, but I knew it could be done. So allowing for a full 360 degree rotation was at the heart of the Mark 2 design. This meant everything within the inner gimbal had to rotate about this main axis. So gone are the plane bearings and in go two slip rings, which are still bearings, but they've got fancy grooves and contacts so you can continuously power rotating electronics without the wires binding up. I've incorporated two kinds of slip rings into the design. One with two larger conductors for power on the left and another with 12 for data connections on the right. This is important because we need to transmit a signal from the rotating gimbal to the fixed the game has no modeled actuators for the handles, so it's up to the imagination how they're driven. Wheatley Mark 1 was driven by a servo with a 1 to 1 gear ratio, and this was fine, but with a reduced space in Mark 2, we need to offset things. So now I'm using some strong micro servos offset to the center of the inner shell. These are linked to arms which mount on 6mm D shafts. If you saw the Mark 1 handles fail, that's because those use shoulder screws as shafts which meant if they accelerate too fast, they could unscrew themselves and easily become loose. Like before, both motors are on one side, with idler bearings on the opposite side. It's not immediately apparent, but making this design change was pretty complicated because there are a lot of, well, literal moving parts. See, the reason why Mark I couldn't rotate the inner assembly fully is due to the handle mechanisms. Every part of the inner assembly will pass through this area if it rotates around, meaning it will collide with anything in this space. So the entire handle assembly needs to be sandwiched between the inner assembly and outer shells. This is why there's an awkward notch in the gimbal that allows it to spin without crashing into the motors. Allowing for full rotation meant I had to make a major change to the design of a personality core because they have a fundamental flaw. See, the outer shells remain fixed relative to each other, but there's nothing physically holding them locked in place if the inner assembly can rotate 360 degrees. The handles don't touch the outer shells, so they can't be supports. So I had to add an extended chassis that holds the shells together. This way, they remain fixed in place. It does protrude out the back of my design because the face ring does have to clear this area, but I did my best to keep it minimal so it matches the width of the side elements and only sticks out as far as is necessary. But most importantly, you can't see it from the front. Now, this video had a lot of me talking, but I promise I don't want to do any more update videos. I just want Wheatley, so the next time you see anything related to Wheatley on my channel, it will be the Wheatley video. So stick around for that. I've got one other video coming up before then. Also, I have a patron, one Patreon supporter. Angry Hobos, you're the best.